What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, I'm going to be giving you a 75,000 mile update on my Lexus ISF. There it is, 75,000 miles. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I know it's been a while since I put out a video, just been busy with life and whatnot, but I thought I just want to make this 75,000 mile update. Um, I passed that a couple weeks ago and I just wanted to kind of let the people know what's been going on with my car, what I've been doing, um, how it's held up. Maybe you're somebody that is looking into buying an ISF and you want to see, you know, how this car is holding up at this mileage. So in this video, I'm going to kind of go over like, you know, stats about the car, um, mods that I've done to the car, repairs that I've done, maintenance, and also some future plans that I, uh, you know, would like to do with this car. So let's start off with the statistics. I bought this car three years and three months ago, back in April 2016. This is a 2012 Lexus ISF. It was a certified pre-owned Lexus, and it had 50,900 and some odd miles. Today as it sits, it has 75,900 and some odd miles on it. And I've owned, you know, so I've owned it for about 25,000 of those miles. In that time, I have taken this car to seven um, track days, uh, you know, road courses. And I'd say between 400 and 450 passes at the drag strip. Um, you've probably seen a, lot, seen a lot of my videos on my channel, have a lot of fun doing both of those. I have gone on road trips with this car, five, 600 mile road trips. And, you know, this, this car has just, you know, performed very well. I said this in a previous video. And if I had to describe this car in one word, it would be consistent. It is consistent on, you know, as, as an everyday car, it consistently, you know, works, it turns on, it, you know, drives around as a daily, great. I never, you know, I've never really worried about getting stuck anywhere. I'm never, uh, you know, having cold sweats at night, waking up thinking something is gonna break on my car. You know, what is the next thing that's gonna go out? Nothing like that. Um, it's consistent at times at the track. It's a very, you know, low maintenance car and it's just a, overall a really pleasant car to, um, to own. I think this is a very good, all around jack of all trades vehicle. I have my wife and two kids in, in the back of this car. And, you know, I could ask for a little bit more room in the back seat, but you know, that's kind of uh, just how it is, especially when you have kids and car seats, um, there's a little bit of room to be desired. Let's move on to the mods now. When I got this car, you know, certified pre-owned, so it's gonna be bone stock. And um, when I got it, I owned it for, I be believe three weeks or a month. And I already kind of knew because I had been looking at the ISF kind of what my first mods I wanted to do were going to be. Those three mods, I bought them. It was the Swift Springs in the front only, the RR Racing USRS, and the X-Force Catback Exhaust. So I've had those on my car for three years and two months. They've all been great. Um, you know, no issues with any of those um, items. There were, you know, there was with the initial batch of the x-force exhaust uh yeah trim the trim the mufflers there's a little extra uh pipe on there and that was trimmed when i uh, had it put on so you know the, that was like i guess the only issue with install but i think that's been remedied now but um had those mods for on my car for you know that that amount of time and they've all been good mods i have separate videos on those mods on my channel so if you want to check those out you can too and the next things that I did, you know, I drove the car for a little bit, started like kind of getting into drag racing and then more of the road coursing. Drag, drag racing is fun, you know, by, by all means. Um, it's very quick. You can kind of see who's faster than who, but I think road courses are where you're going to see and find the limits of yourself and your car and just become a better driver. So I started doing that, but before I did that, I wanted to change out the stock pads because they were at the end of life, I think maybe like one or two millimeters left on them. Um, and so I bought uh, Project Mew HC 800 pads for the track because previously to that, I'm sorry, I had bought uh, the Project Mew NS 400 pads because um, they're, I read from everybody that they are a great street pad, um, you know, very little dust. I could not stand the amount of dust that the stock pads were producing very quiet um they i think they are worth every penny those project mu and s 400s but they are not a very good track pad so 
I talked to some guys um, that you know do track their car and they recommended the Project Mew HC800s, which is a street and track pad, but it produces probably stock levels of dust, but it can handle, you know, a lot more, you know, twice, pretty much twice the heat, um, you know, 800 is for 800 degrees centigrade, NS400 is for 400 degrees centigrade. So double the heat those NS400s can, and those have been a great track pad. Um, I've, I've used them for all my track days and they have not failed me at all. And I have also changed out the front rotors on my car to uh, from the stock rotors to brakenetic slotted rotors. And I did that because the, um, the stock rotors started cracking. They were cracked beyond their limits because of the heat that I was putting through them while I was on my track days. So I, I've um, gone to these slotted rotors and I did two track days with them. They held up well, they performed just like stock, but I, I talked to the company, Breakdetic. I said, hey, what is going on here? Why do these look so rusty? You know, and they, they looked at them, looked at the pictures, and they told me that, that I had uh, burned off the E-coating from the heat that I had put through them. So um, they sent me a new pair with zinc coating on them, which is supposed to be um, more heat resistant. So um, I have, I've put them on, but I have not tried them tried them on the track yet. So I will be doing that. I've also done, oh, I've, I've changed the brake fluid from the stock brake fluid to a Project Mew brake fluid. That, uh, and I've done two track days on it. Great fluid, um, you know, no, uh, no issues with it on track. But aside from those, I've kept my car pretty much stock. And I've done that because I kind of want to keep this a daily driver. I didn't want to go too far down the modding hole of, you know, spending thousands of that and thousands of dollars because once you start doing too many things oh you know if i upgrade this power then i need to upgrade you know the the, the suspension and you know you kind of get into this the snowball effect and um i'm wondering i'm trying to resist doing that it is pretty hard when i have you know friends with isfs they're getting new things um and you know they're telling me about the improvements and whatnot so i am uh, definitely trying to hold back uh, oh, I'm sorry. The other, I guess, big mod that I did too, if you call it a mod, would be um, changing out the tires. The car came with the stock size Michelin Pilot Super Sports, and I have put two sets of Firestone Firehawk Indy 500 tires in two different sizes, uh, 245s in the front, 275s in the back, and then I went to 255s in the front, 285s in the back. So those are all the mods that I have done to my car. Next up, repairs. None. I have none. I have not done any repairs to this car. Um, with all the uh, tough love that I've given her, she has just, you know, begged for more. There's nothing that I have done to, uh, you know, outside of normal maintenance to repair her. I guess in, unless you call a dead battery a repair, but I think that can kind of happen to anybody. That was a quick and easy fix. I took it to Lexus, still under CPO warranty and they swapped the battery in, uh, a new one in for free. I guess the, the previous one had like a dead cell in it. No signs of the valley plate leak. Thankfully, I do not see pink fluid anywhere. No water pump issues. Um, look under my car. I don't see any you know pink fluid anywhere. So that is good. I'm hoping that continues because it seems that a lot of people are being affected by that valley plate leak. No cracked headers that I can tell. You know, I don't get that ticking sound that kind of goes away that people describe when they have the cracked uh, stock headers. So glad about that. Yeah. So, I mean, no, no real repairs, no big issues with my car in this time of owning it. And um, so I'm glad about that. I'm hoping that continues because that's one of the reasons why I chose the Lexus ISF. Maintenance wise, I've just done the 5k, you know, interval services when I bought the car, you know, just about 51,000 miles. So did the 55,000 mile um, maintenance it, 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 because it was a CPO, um, the, the, your first four maintenances uh, are included with the purchase price. So I took it to Lexus. They did 55,000 miles, pretty much just like an oil change and checking a, you know, a couple uh, things here, fluids and whatnot. Had that done there. 60,000 mile service. That's kind of the big one. Um, they changed the spark plugs, uh, rear diff oil and oil change and, you know, fluids and whatnot. That's the, that's the expensive one. If you get it done, I've seen people, you know, pay you know, upwards of over a thousand dollars for that service. That seems to be a big one. If you take it to the Lexus dealership, I'm sure it could be done uh, a little bit cheaper at other places, or if you can do it yourself, 
good for you. And then I did the 65,000 mile, which is pretty much just an oil change. And then um, I did not get to 70,000 miles by the time that I, my two years was up. So they, uh, they did that service at, I think it was 67.5 or so. And uh, I had to do it that, that final month or else they wouldn't have been able to do it. Or at least that's what a, a few dealerships told me. And so I took it there, had that done. And then I did my own oil change at 72,500. Because if you look at the maintenance manual, that's pretty much all these, you know, these, uh, you know, little 5K services are checking fluids, oil change, filter change, and, you know, a couple odds and ends here. I did that. And then I'll be doing the next one at my house at 75, or I'm sorry, 77.5. So, um, that's pretty much all the maintenance that I've uh, really had to do on this car. Um, you're going to have to do that for any car. So been uh, relatively uh, good on maintenance for that. Future plans. What do I plan on doing with this car? I could, I plan on continuing to track the car. I do want to get um, better as a driver, want to keep going to road courses. I've done the four main uh, road courses here in Southern California, which are Auto Club Speedway, the Roval, um, Chukwala Valley and Big Willow as well as Button Willow uh, Raceway and I haven't done the Streets of Willow yet but you know maybe that'll be on the list uh, later but those are the main four big tracks in Southern California that I've done there are uh, more in Northern California you know there's Laguna Seca, Thunder Hill, uh, Sonoma so I don't know maybe I'll explore and go up there um, and check those out there's a couple in Arizona and uh, Las Vegas but for the most for, for the foreseeable future right now i just plan on hitting up those four uh california ones just want to continue tracking the car um just pretty much just buying consumables you know i don't i i have no urge or really need for what i'm doing and what i want to do to you know true like really upgrade and you know get to the next i guess, I guess take the car to the next level i just plan you know right now buying brakes um you know, as those go out, tires and whatnot, and maybe if anything goes bad, but you know, nothing really has so far. So that's been good for me. If you asked me, what would I do to my car? If I, you know, was going to, you know, invest that money into it, I'd probably, if you asked me on the next month, I'd probably go with um, coilovers. And from my research and talking to people, I'd probably go with those, with the Olin coilovers. Um, they just seem like a really good, um, track and street setup. A few people that I've talked to that do have them, swear by them, love them, think they're like the greatest thing. So um, I'd, I'd probably just go go all in for a really nice set of coilovers and then um, possibly kind of to match up with it, lightweight 18 inch wheels and probably like those um, 8008R tires. That seems to be a really good track tire that I see a lot of the guys running there. So those are probably the three things that I would buy if I was going to do another uh, the next mods to my car I keep going back and forth thinking yeah that'd be cool to have um I don't know do I want to drop seven thousand dollars on all that stuff kind of weighing you know going back and forth on that so I you know I, I have no particular urge to go out and get that but if I was going to um, get something next those three things would probably be it oh and also I probably get an oil cooler too just because you've probably talk, heard me talk about the oil gets very hot in this car, especially when you're on track. I mean, just normal day driving and whatnot, you'll be fine. Drag racing, you're fine. But if you go to a road course and the temperatures are above 80 degrees Fahrenheit and you drive at least the way that I do, you are going to send that oil temperature skyrocketing. It's going to go to the end. It's going to be beeping at you. It's going to be getting real hot. And it's not just because of the oil I use. I've, you know, I use uh, Mobile One full synthetic. Um, previous to that, it was, um, you know, what Lexus puts in. And I've talked to guys that run the the, the expensive stuff, the Amsol, the Redline, and they have those um, oil heating issues. So it's not just the oil that's um, causing me to run hot. A lot of ISF guys that have run in the heat without an auxiliary oil cooler have experienced this too. I am going to do a Q and A. I asked people on Instagram, like, Hey, I'm doing this, uh, um, the 75 K video, send me your, um, questions and I will try and answer them. So here they are. What is the fastest stock car you raced and beat? Mm, I would 
probably say some of those Hellcats. Yeah, Hellcat, uh, Camaro ZL1, the 6th gen, um, or even uh, C7 Z06. I, yeah, I'd probably say those are probably the fastest, you know, fastest cars on paper that I've beat. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think that there'd be anything faster than those. I mean, I, I, I really enjoyed beating those cars because, you know, the forced induction V8s with, I don't know, two, 300 more horsepower than me. I'll take that win. So those were definitely fun kills. Do you plan on getting another car? No, I do not plan on getting another car. Um, I'm not going to say I don't look around. Maybe, uh, I'm sure all of us are guilty of this going on the car, you know, websites and kind of looking and seeing where things are at, you know, possibly moving on, you know, what are, what are cars going for now? What, what is your car going for now? And definitely going into, um, uh, prices or, you know, cars with you prices, you have no business looking at, looking at the, uh, you know, the McLarens and, uh, some of the Lamborghinis and whatnot that are out there. So I do not plan on getting a, a new car anytime soon. Um, but I, I won't say that I'm not. I just look around to kind of see where the market are at with things just to uh, keep my ear to the ground. How are the front springs holding up and feeling? The springs are holding up. Um, I don't really, you know, feel any difference from when I put them on a little over three years ago. So they appear to be holding up well. Uh, maybe it's just one of those things that slowly degrades over time and you don't really notice it, um, if that is even happening, but they, they, they feel pretty good to me. Um, you know, as good as I can remember them ever feeling. What is your least favorite part about owning an ISF? I would definitely say the, um, that is people thinking that this is an F sport. And I'm sure you've heard that answer before. And that's kind of one of the uh, ires of F owners is people saying, nice F sport. Hey, I like your F sport because this is not an F sport. And, so, you know, some people get offended. Some people just laugh. And, you know, I, I you know, I've probably kind of done both, but, um, that is probably the worst part of owning this car is people thinking that it is the lesser version of this car. Which oil do you prefer? Uh, I'm just using mobile one full synthetic oil. Uh, you know, it's worked for this car so far, the uh, couple thousand miles that I've ran with it, uh, including track days, and um, I've used it on other cars too. So, you know, I guess it's my preferred oil. I don't, you know, it's like 50 bucks for the uh, 10 quarts that you need for this car. And uh, so it's not very expensive. And um, yeah, I mean, I don't really get into the oil analysis and whatnot because you can really go very deep into a rabbit hole of trying to understand the different oils and you might get paralysis by analysis by trying to figure out which oil to go with. So um, I've just gone with Mobile One Synthetic. I think it's, uh, you know, worked pretty well for my car, my needs, my application and um, continue to, I'll continue to use them. What future mods will you be doing to it? The driver, continuing to work on the driver mod because I know that I'm not pushing this car to what it is capable of. I'm not a pro driver by any means, and I definitely think I can squeeze out a little bit more as I get better, smoother, and uh, just develop, you know, more consistently as a driver, especially on the road courses. Why don't you mod your car? I think I've modded my car a little bit. I mean, I'm not, you know, I haven't really touched too much stuff on it, but if you want to, um, you know, sponsor me and give me a, you know, money or parts, I won't say no to that, so uh, bring it on down. Shoot me a message if you want to give me stuff for free. I won't say no to that. So that about wraps it up for my 75,000 um, mile review. Thank you for watching this video. If you've watched it all the way to the end, you are the real MVP. So thank you very much, and we will talk to you soon on the next one. Um, let me know if there's anything else that I didn't cover that you would like to know down in the comments section. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. Take a look around. There's a lot of uh, good uh, ISF content on there. And uh, make sure to hit that like button. So thank you very much. I'm going to add a couple of videos surrounding my head here and here for your viewing pleasure. So uh, with that said, we'll talk to you soon. And we will uh, make some more videos as ideas come to my head. So talk to you soon. Thanks again.